Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to another video in the series where we are building patches from scratch on the mighty fine Behringer DeepMind. In the first video in the series, we built a pad patch because, well, what else do you do when you get a brand new polysynth, frankly? And I'd like to revisit pads uh, today. But whereas the previous uh, video was kind of a classic, brassy, warm kind of pad sound, today I'd like to look at building something that's a lot more sort of ambient and evolving and drawn out. And I want to maybe make more use of the uh, modulation and also the effects that are available on the DeepMind. Right, so uh, let's get building our patch. So the first thing uh, to establish uh, is that this patch is going to have a big long envelope. So I'm going to head over uh, to the VCA. So at the moment we've got this happening. Uh, I'm going to just set everything up high for the um, decay and the sustain and leave the attack instant for the moment. And I'm just going to set the release. Super long. Now I don't want this to be one of those pads that kind of womps into existence. I want it to kind of come on quite quickly and then for all the movement to be sort of the modulation that happens within that sound. And in fact, I could even make this a little bit plucky, I think, on the attack. So um, how do we define pluck within a uh, an envelope? Well, it is a quick decay down to a lower uh, sustain level, essentially. So. Um, what I usually do when I'm trying to get plucky sound is I'll put my sustain down to zero. So I'm just working with the pluck. I can work out how fast I want the pluck to be. Kind of like that. And then we decide where we're going to pluck down to. So no pluck. And that's kind of where the pluck becomes evident, I think. So we've got that kind of a plucky attack and then a very long, expansive uh, release. Uh, okay, so that's kind of the starting point in terms of the, the envelope of the sound. Obviously, we're going to look at the filter envelope in just a second. But let's come over to the oscillator section and kind of define that main sound. So I'm actually going to start um, just with oscillator 2. Um, because on oscillator 2, if we bring it up, just tune it. Or we'll tune it respective to the uh, first oscillator in a second. Uh, so oscillator two has this awesome tone mod uh, thing here, and it's kind of like a pulse width modul uh, modulation, but with varying alternating pulse sizes. It's, it's, it's pretty interesting. But um, what it does sonically is, as you sweep across it, you start introducing all these different harmonics. It's almost like you get all these ghost notes because the harmonics. Like, like there, for example, the harmonics are so strong that you're getting these sort of essentially whole extra notes happening within your oscillator. So if we have a very long LFO sweeping across that, we're going to have this constant evolution of the sound where uh, we're getting these different notes and harmonics just kind of popping out of the sound. I think that can be really, really beautiful. Uh, so let's do that. So I'm going to head into the edit menu and click across till we get to the oscillator 2 parameters. And you see here we've got the T mod source, the tone mod source. That's currently set to module, uh, to module to manual, which is what I was doing, sweeping the uh, sweeping the fader. If we switch that over to one of our LFOs, I'll go with LFO 2, I think. LFO 2 is uh, currently running very, very slowly, but might work out very well. And we'll just crank the tone mod up. And you can hear that as I hold down the note now, we're getting all of those harmonics kind of popping out into existence. Can we just drop it down a little bit? No, let's be brave, let's go a bit more. So we want to get to that point where it does that. almost like it's changing octave at some time. It's, it's really, really cool. Um, right, um, so uh, let's go back over to oscillator one now and bring in the pulse, uh, uh, the square wave, the pulse wave. We 
because these are two pulse waves that are more or less in tune with the pulse width, uh, essentially mod, uh, changing between them, you're getting the way they're interacting is really, really interesting. But we can probably add some pulse width modulation to that as well. So at the moment, this is set to manual as well. So we can, we can sweep it. You can hear now when I'm sweeping it manually. All of those cool interactions with the tone mod so we definitely want to make use of that um so i am going to go into the edit menu again flick across to the oscillator one parameters i'm going to set my uh pulse width modulation source to let's set it to lfo one so it's running at a different rate shall we uh yes so come out of there we can turn up the pulse width modulation you can start to hear it's changing can adjust the LFO speed there can even have it quite fast maybe be brave with the pulse width modulation start to sound out tune get to the point where it just starts to sound out of tune. It's not too far. Nice, okay. So um, the sound that we've got at the moment is quite sort of hollow. So uh, if we bring in the sawtooth wave, hopefully that will just anchor the sound a bit more. hear now that how that's anchored it so before quite hollow just giving us something to sort of uh, hold on to that's not <laughs> moving around everywhere uh, so um, let's just make sure that we're happy with the way that the pitch of oscillator 2 is compared to oscillator 1 oh I've just nudged the pitch mod there it's out of tune get them slightly out of tune so you get that kind of richness but let's um let's talk a bit more about the out of tuneness and how we're getting that richness there so um what we could do is we could introduce some pitch mod on uh, on our oscillators now by default if we bring in the pitch mod both of these oscillators are going to warble at the same time obviously that's far too much pitch mod but just as an illustration there but if we come into the edit menu for oscillator one we have this parameter here called PMOD mode. At the moment it's set to oscillator 1 and 2, which means that the pitch modulation here affects both of these oscillators at once. But we can change that so that it only affects oscillator 1. So what that essentially does is we can pitch mod oscillator 1 without uh, pitch modding oscillator 2, and that creates essentially chorusing. So let's check that out. So you can hear there in the background that the, the oscillator 2 is kind of just the same you've got that weird warbling on top but if we can just find the point it should just be really really subtle so we're talking yeah a couple of cent 20 cent I mean 20 cent is is more than you would have probably if you were just pitch modding normally but because it's kind of anchored by that that, first, that second oscillator doesn't kind of sound out tune it just gives you that kind of chorusing the other way that we can make things sort of nicely out of tune because putting things slightly out of tune is a nice thing to do it creates this kind of warmth and chorusing uh, is if we go into the poly uh, menu here we've got our oscillator drift and that means that the different voices uh, on the synth so we've got six voices on the deep mind six or 12 on the deep mind 12s uh, it means that all of those are constantly kind of drifting in and out of tune with each other. So it's not oscillator one being out of tune with oscillator two. It's oscillator one and oscillator two of one voice being out of tune with an oscillator one and oscillator two of another voice, if that makes sense. As a starting point, I, I usually find that something around 21 is quite nice. So um, this is without. And then this is with.
Okay, so that's kind of our oscillators kind of talked about. We'll maybe come back and fine tune them, but that's kind of a good starting point. Now, at the moment, this is all too, um, all too bright for me. So let's dull it down a little bit. I think I'm gonna go with a two pole fil filter uh, today with the VCF and. And I'm also going to bring out that resonance because that's going to help pull out those harmonics as they fly past in oscillator two. Right. Now, I don't want that filter just to stay um, where it is the whole time. So I'm going to modulate it both with the envelope and with the LFO. So the envelope, I'm going to just give it a bit of an attack, maybe try and introduce a bit more of that pluckiness at the attack, and also then that kind of gradual... Um, release as well. So let's send a little bit of envelope to the filter. Obviously that that envelope at the moment is not right so we'll head over to the VCF envelope here. I do want an instant, I don't really want any near that happening so an instant onset is, is probably right. Um, as is probably quite quite a quick uh, decay. It's just that at the moment it's decaying too far down. And then of course we also need to give this a nice long release to match our VCA. Maybe even a little bit longer. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, the other thing that we could do, maybe. So when we're holding uh, the the notes there, obviously the envelope is sustaining at the sustain level, so it's not really changing over time. It might be nice to actually have that sort of just get a little bit darker over time, so that new notes come in and they can kind of take precedence over the old ones. The way that you can do this, and this is really really neat on the. Um, uh, on the envelopes on the deep mind. And I think uh, the, the curves often get talked about in terms of changing the curve of the attack and the decay and the release. But what the curve mode does when you're altering the sustain is it basically gives you another, if you see that on the screen there, it gives you another sort of long decay down to another value. So we can actually have it so that that sustained note also it's darker over time like that. Which I think is really, really cool. And I, it, it's, it's a really, it's, it's not as interesting as changing all those curves to exponential and logarithmic, but I think it's actually such a useful sound design tool uh, that often gets overlooked. Nice. Okay, so the other thing that I want to do is introduce a bunch of um, sort of LFO movement in there as well. And I want it to be the slower LFO too. So if we go into the edit menu for the VCF, we can just check here that the LFO is LFO two, which it is. Great. Um, so let's bring in some LFO. I think I want to be quite brave with the LFO and have it quite wide. Maybe even more than that. It can get quite dark, I think. Because we have that attack on the envelope at the start of the note, even when the LFO is set quite dark, you still get an attack. And you get this beautiful brightness otherwise. So here we're getting quite dark, but we still get that attack from the envelope. So we don't lose the notes. Cool, okay. Uh, so the other part of the filter obviously is the high pass filter. Um, so the first thing to address is the boost button. Do we want to turn on that low end boost? Let's check it out. So that's without, and that's with. Yeah, let's have it on. 
often when I turn it on, I find my need just to turn up the high pass filter just to tidy up those low mids, but I don't think we need to do it here really. It seems to be kind of holding together without getting too weird. That's cool. Right, okay, let's um, let's add a little bit more movement. What I quite like to do when I have these very sort of long, languid, evolving sounds is to have an element to it, which is sort of sharp and fast. And it doesn't have to be like super obvious to the sound, but it kind of just helps to, to keep things rolling along, keeps giving it sort of momentum. So what if we created uh, an additional kind of filter movement that's sort of a bit more sort of pingy, repeated sort of da -da 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 kind of sound. So let's see how we can do that. Now, it will not have escaped your notice that I have used up both my LFOs on all this long uh, moving stuff happening. However, we kind of do have an extra pseudo LFO, and that's because the envelopes on the DeepMind can be used in looping mode. Um, so I've made use of the VCA and the VCF envelope. I haven't yet made use of the mod envelope. So if we come over here into the mod envelope, uh, on this top bit here in the screen, we can change the way that it's triggered. So th this is quite interesting. You can have the envelope re-trigger each time an LFO goes around. That is an, uh, an interesting trick on some patches, but the one I'm looking for here is just the straight up loop here. Uh, so we can create a shape here. So if I turn my release to zero and my uh, sustain to zero, and if we look here, if we have an attack uh, that's instant and then uh, a decay set accordingly, that's essentially a, a sawtooth wave, right? Or a shark tooth wave. It's a shark tooth wave where you can adjust the uh, the uh, how, how sharp the shark tooth is actually, which is quite cool. So we can have more of a, a shark fin wave if we like. So, uh, okay, so we've created an envelope here, and this envelope is going to loop as long as the um, as long as the key is held down. Uh, so let's choose somewhere to send it. So if we go into our mod matrix here, and I want to use my source, so I can hold down the mod button and tap uh, the mod envelope here. That sets my source to envelope three. It's just a little shortcut, um, and I'm going to set the um, I'm going to set the destination to be my frequency of my filter cutoff actually so just hold that down and just wiggle the frequency there and then so nothing's happened at the moment because we haven't set the depth but if we turn the depth all the way up you can hear there that we've got that movement there that's way too long at the moment so let's go back into our modulation envelope here and we can just basically change the rate by adjusting the decay time. Uh, sorry, that was adjusting the curve, not the time. That's kind of too obvious for me at the moment, so uh, we can just adjust the depth there until we find a kind of a sweet spot. I just kind of want it to be... Again, that's probably still too much. A bit too subliminal. Something like that. Now, notice that when I release the key, that movement isn't happening anymore. That's a limitation of the uh, loop mode on the envelopes is that you do have to have a key down for that to work. It'd be awesome uh, if in a future firmware update, they change that so that the loop could also be set to, to roll, um, as essentially act as a straight up LFO that's always moving. Um, if uh, Yuli, if you're listening, then uh, feel free to add that. <laughs> So that's kind of a cool additional bit of movement that we can add in there. 
this is maybe jumping ahead a little bit, but I think it'd be really cool if we could add more of that movement by using our mod wheel. That's actually really easy to do in the mod matrix. Uh, so jumping ahead, but let's do it. I haven't really got to the mod wheel stuff, but you know, whatever. So hold down uh, the mod button again, move our mod wheel. And the destination we are going to set up near the top here to the mod one depth. What this essentially is, is a modulation sl slot where the depth is going to affect the depth of another modulation slot. So the mod wheel here is going to affect the depth here. So if I turn my modulation wheel up, I can now set a new more obvious level, which I can then turn down. Which is kind of cool, I think. Uh, okay, um, okay. So we're about ready to get into some of the more sort of um, uh, modulation and effects stuff. One thing that really needs to be addressed first, though, is at the moment this sound is quite mono. I don't mean monophonic. I mean that if you're listening on on studio monitors or on headphones, it's all going to be sitting down the middle. Let's spread that out a little bit. Really easy to do on the DeepMind. You just come into the VCA edit menu here and we've got this pan spread. Uh, what that will do is each time you play a note, the voices will be given a new pan position. It, it instantly makes this huge difference. Now, at the moment, uh, once each of these voices has been given a pan position, until we play a note which triggers that voice again, it's going to stay there. Uh, so although we're getting a stereo spread, we're not really getting movement in the stereo field, but we can do that, again, coming into the mod matrix here. Um, I'm going to use... Uh, I'll use the slower LFO, um, LFO2, as my source. And over here on the destination... Just going to move the VCA. So I don't want VCA active. I just happen to know that the parameter I want is near here. We have got pan spread as a um, destination. Uh, so we can modulate that pan spread amount that we just did there. Now there's also a VCA pan. What that's going to do is it's going to sweep stuff across left to right, essentially. I find what that ends up doing is it ends up sort of shifting the sound to one side or the other, which can be cool. And if that is what you're after, so for example, if you're doing like... Um, uh, faking a Leslie sound, perfect. But if I just want to have something sort of undulate in and out of stereo, I tend to prefer the pan spread. So let's set that depth. It's going up too wide, I think. Hopefully now, if you're listening on headphones or on studio monitors, you're hearing that not only is stuff spread out, it's also sort of going to the outsides and then coming back into the centre. Which is really, really nice. Okay, um... Right, so we're towards the end of the patch, I think. Let's talk about effects, and let's be pretty um, crazy with the effects in this case. So in the effects page, uh, if you pop your cursor uh, to the end of the effects chain, if you like, you can switch between different arrangements of uh, the effects. So for example, if you want all of your effects in parallel, you've got um, M4. Uh, here you've got um, a, a general path to begin with, and then two in parallel at the end. The one I am looking for, however, is this complicated looking fellow here, M9. So this one's slightly weird to try and follow. Uh, so the input comes in to slot three. It travels to slot four. And when it gets to slot four, two things happen. One is it travels to the output. So you hear the output of four. But you can see here there's also an arrow that sends it up to slot one. Slot one goes into slot two and then drops back in just before slot four. So what you've got here 
is a feedback loop. And this is where you can do, and I'm sure some of you saw this coming, this is where you can do shimmer reverb. A shimmer reverb is a reverb where there is a pitch shift in the feedback loop. So let's take a look at that. So where we want to put our reverb is in slot four. So if we come down to slot four, I'm going to choose, I'm just a real sucker for the plate reverb, I have to say. I just think that's gorgeous. It's getting a little bit spicy at the top end there, so let's just go into the uh, the deep editing here. Uh, that's a big ambient patch. Let's just pop the decay a little bit longer as well, shall we? Uh, so um, a bit spicy at the top end, so I'm just going to turn the damping down a little bit and maybe just drop that high cut there as well. Uh, and then we've also got the bass malt. I should learn technically what this does, but what I know that it, it can do is just emphasize the low end of the reverb. Which I think can be quite cool on these big ambient. These big ambient patches. Now, usually I wouldn't keep the reverb that high in the mix. And um, even now I'm tempted just to bring it down a little bit. even creating big ambient patches. I can't bring myself to lean on the reverb quite that hard. But that's kind of working. Okay, so that, that's, that's a, a normal reverb. Let's turn this into a shimmer reverb. So if we put um, something uh, that's going to do pitch shifting in, in one of these slots here, either one or two, that's going to give us uh, a pitch shifting that's happening in the feedback loop of the reverb. So that means that the reverb comes out of the reverb, goes into a pitch shifter, which is going to send the pitch up, and then that pitch shifted up reverb is going to be sent back into uh, the reverb, and then it's going to be pitch shifted inside the reverb, and then that pitch shifted signal is going to be reverbed, and then sent back into the pitch shift and you kind of get this feedback loop where the shimmer sort of goes up and sort of blossoms out which is what shimmer reverb is and it's very very pretty it's almost a bit of a cliche these days but i think it's still worth playing with uh, so uh, slot two that's in our feedback loop let's find a pitch shift algorithm uh, so we're looking for where is it uh, dual pitch here we go now you'll notice here that um next to the level uh, we've got an exclamation mark. That's just um, the synth way of saying, hey, by the way, this isn't a feedback loop. I've set it really low so that you don't sort of go completely out of control and, and overdrive stuff. We can set it above one. It's just at the moment it's set there. So um, let's just go into the deep editing of the pitch. Uh, so the two bits that we want to talk about in particular are the, the pitch shifts here. So we've got the semi one here and the semi two here. So those are the semitones of pitch shifting. Uh, we want this to be um, up an octave. So that's 12 semitones up each. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of coarse detune. So that's just going to give us a bit of chorusing between the two of them as well. Uh, okay. And we can probably open that high cut out as well. So let's see what that sounds like at the moment. If there is shimmer in there, it's very, very subtle at the moment, and that's because the level on the pitch shift out is so low. So let's carefully Can you hear now that we've kind of started to get this? There we go, that chorus of pitch shifted angels. Still quite subtle. A bit more obvious there. They kind of blossom them up because it has to go through the reverb and sort of build up that pitch shift. I 
I'm willing to turn the reverb up, I think. That's kind of amazing, isn't it? Uh, 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 Shimmer reverb's become this cliche, but it is still... kind of gorgeous okay uh but i tell you what let's not have that on our patch at all times let's have that on our uh, mod wheel so that we can bring that in and out so let's set the level of this back down uh to where it was to begin with which is one which is basically no shimmer at all and let's come over gee, i'm just going to save this quickly um i'm just going to come over to our mod matrix here and again i'm going to uh choose the source as our mod wheel and across here, we're going to find the effects level. Uh, it's on effects two, isn't it, our pitch shift? Let's just check that. Pitch shift is on uh, two, yep, okay. So effects two level, so that's essentially moving that thing that I was adjusting earlier. Turn the mod wheel up, and then let's find the point where we get the shimmer that we want. Duck the mod wheel down just to go back to reverb. And dial in the shimmer as we want it. Shall we add some more effects? Yes, let's. Uh, let's put a um, let's put a delay before the reverb, perhaps. Yeah. So let's just go into uh, the delay here. I just want the normal delay. So you can hear now that that reverb doesn't come on instantly anymore because it has to hit the delay first, which I quite like. But because the delay has feedback, it's going to keep putting itself back into the reverb as well. So with the shimmer. Uh, but we can also make use of the delay to make things a little bit wider. So if we go into the deep editing for the delay in the uh, mode here, if we said it's ping pong, it's going to be shifting backwards and forwards. Uh, across the stereo. And we could even set the uh, feedback a little bit higher as well. So we've got that delay happening in before the reverb. And we could go on. Actually, there's one more thing that uh, that I will do just quickly um, is um, I'm going to go into my oscillators here and I'm just going to set the um, pitch bend wheel to give us a little bit of extra pitch mod because I bet that sounds awesome once you've got the, uh, the shimmer happening as well.
I mean, there's lots more that we could do to, to sort of keep this patch moving. There's other places we could send the LFOs, I think, uh, that would maybe... We might get to the point where we're doing it for the sake of movement, but it might be fun anyway. Um, but I think... We'll leave it there for today. So thank you for joining me uh, on this ambient journey. I'm sorry the video is a little bit long, but I guess that's appropriate when you're creating ambient patches. Uh, if you enjoyed the video and you found anything useful, please do hit the thumbs up button. It really helps me out. And also, if you're uh, interested in seeing any more videos on the DeepMind 6 or any other synthesis stuff in general, please do make sure that you're subscribed to the channel as well. And, you know, hit the bell button so that you get uh, notifications when there are new videos as well. I've got um, an idea for a series um, with the DeepMind where I just look at individual little sort of uh, sound design tips or ideas that you can maybe make use of on in an individual basis like building blocks within your patches uh, which I'm hoping to do fairly soon uh, it would be a nice counterpoint to this very very long video uh, anyway if you made it to the end hi thanks uh, and I hope to see you again soon guys take care